you know, it just depends. I don't want y'all saying that I'm a true alcoholic. I ain't, I ain't around here trying to be like Noriega with tartar and, and flack and, and rotten teeth from drinking alcohol and everything. And then when I detox, I got the shakes during my own interview. I'm not trying to be out there, you know, like him during drink chats. Hey, yo! show okay um i gotta get through this because we got a lot of content tonight it's a lot there's a lot going on um when i tell you it's been it's been a lot of investigative journalism going on around here okay because they're gonna put some respect on what we do around here i mean they already do but we're gonna make sure okay and so listen a lot of surprise content Real quick, tonight we're going to be going over, we're going to be talking about Felicity, Felicity Hoffman, okay? Young Thug, Kiki and Darius, we got an update on that. Jeannie Mai and GZ, okay? The best friend is out here talking. If y'all, listen, I've been trying to get in his DM. I can't find his DM, so if y'all know him, you know what I'm saying? Y'all need to tell him to call me like you did Kiss, like you get, like you did Kiss and Chavis, and y'all enjoying that interview right now over there on TashaKLive.com, okay? Also going to be talking about Tiffany Haddish, Carrie Hilson versus Tierra. Uh, uh, Tierra Marie, all right? Also, Saucy Santana. And, of course, we got a surprise interview for y'all at the end, okay? And then we have an explosive interview for y'all tonight on TashaKLive.com. Yes, we flew in the mistress, okay? Well, she says she ain't the mistress, but, you know, the receipts say otherwise. But, hey, it's her word, you know, her story to tell, okay? Um, and for us, you know, for y'all to judge, okay? We just get the content for y'all to judge, you know? At the end of the day, it's our opinion versus her facts. So, uh, yes, we flew in Sonya Durham, okay? And uh, we got a chance to speak to Ernesto. All of that content will be made available a little later tonight at 9 p.m. on TashaKLive.com. You have to subscribe via the website, not the app, but via the website, okay? And then... You can go ahead and stream all you want, okay? You can go ahead and get, you know, the KISS interview. We got a lot of stuff coming over there. The Kevin Hart interview. <laughs> I guess they thought that wasn't coming out. <laughs> we just had things that were just much more important than Kevin Hart. But Kevin Hart will be coming out, okay? His assistant sat down with us when we were in L.A. The assistants are assistants. I'm still waiting on my interview to come out. When is my assistant coming out? I thought mine was coming out. I was excited. I got my wine, you know, my popcorn. I was going to do a view watch party. Where is it? Where's the link? Okay, listen. All right, but listen, before we get started, we're going to run some trailers, right? Okay, we got some sponsors that we need to brag about, which means boldly raise a glass to Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and hold that thought. After this break, Felicity Hoffman, Young Thug, Kiki Palmer, Jeannie Mai, and Jeezy will be right back. Let's go! Now, I know that we're all tired of feeling sluggish, constipated, and not our best selves. That's the reason why I choose to use Vanity Cleanse's 15-Day Detox, a botanical blend that will clean us all out. This is just what you need for constipation relief and flushing out toxins and stomach bloating due to IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome. And it may even support a little weight loss. This 15-day detox contains no artificial ingredients and is a fantastic way to start your journey to restoring your gut health. So visit VanityCleanse.com because beauty starts from within with Vanity Cleanse. You are the mistress to Shirley Strawberry's husband, Ernesto. We would talk every day for like five minutes, like every, like a like a breakfast call. I was a friend, and a, just a friend. We just talked about everything, you know what I'm saying? Five minutes a day, whatever, whatever. I was just a friend. Girl, if I found out. I'm sure. As a wife. But you know what? If I was, if you if was I speaking was, to my husband If I was day, fat and busted, would, would they care? Now, there's been calls that have been all over the internet. Mm -hmm. Okay, that have not only exposed Shirley, the husband, you, and Steve Harvey, and Marjorie Harvey. There's been a lot of these calls circulating. Now, surprising, let me read this article, okay, because I, I just want to read a portion of this art article. Now, Shirley Strawberry's estranged husband is incarcerated at the Atlanta Fulton County Jail on gun possession, theft, back up, fraud. Hold on, no, I just want to read the okay. article. That's, That's why you're here. Okay, That's why you're here. <laughs> So, on um, gun possession, theft, fraud, child pornography charges, 
as per the Jasmine brand. Now, according to Sandra Rose, Williams is serving a 23-month prison sentence. Life. You have very intimate phone calls with this woman's husband, and you're claiming that y'all have never slept together, and you only had five-minute conversations of him waking up and saying good morning to you. That's Nesto calling. That's Nesto calling you. Uh-huh. Okay, go ahead and answer. An inmate at the Cobb County Adult Detention Facility. To accept this call, press zero. Ernesto, it's Tasha K. How you doing? That's what you're dealing with right now. And I put that shit on every fucking post that I ever had on Instagram. I understand it. I took all that shit, all everything I said, twisted to make fun. I don't fuck about that shit. They're going to see God come true today. If you speak, I don't give a damn if, if, if uh, Steve don't like you. I don't, they ain't got to do with me. you here to deliver a motherfucker and I want to see you do your mother job. Steve Harvey made her get up and address the things that she spoke with her husband about in terms of his marriage and what's going on with him and Marjorie and her not being at the house and she's never been to his house and, you know, a lot of stuff. And that then- was one phone call that they, when he was just asking her how her day was and she was just, when a person's in jail, especially mm-hmm. Make sure you got those subscriptions, TashaKLive.com, because it's going down over there at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight, okay? And if I see anybody streaming, because, you know, the winos tell us everything. They subscribe to everybody. <laughs> you know, we already got one <laughs> before the show even started. I said, damn, the winos is on it. Even in your members' live. Like, if you have a members only on your YouTube and stuff, we can get it there. We can get it on Facebook. We are interrupting YouTube checks. Okay, so if we see the content being streamed anywhere, the winos get back to us and they tell us and we strike and we do not pull strikes back. Okay, we will take you all the way to court. All right, Desperate Housewives star Felicity Hoffman just did her first exclusive interview to tell us that, you know, she desperately needed (laughs) to fake her daughter's test results in order to get in college. Okay, this is her first interview. Take a look. I think what you're asking is, uh, mm-hmm. why did I do it? Um, so yeah. I think I can address that pretty head on. Um, Felicity, where's your wine? Child, you're spilling this type of wine. Felicity, you're a desperate housewife. You're supposed to have your wine. You know we really wanted this wine, but go ahead. I know you got to do your little corporate PR, crisis PR thing. Go ahead. You got the black lady sitting behind you to, to keep you in shape, to make sure the black community don't come too hard for you. But I'm dragging your ass. I'm, dragging, I'm, I'm taking it in the trash. Let's go. I People assume that I went into this um, looking for a way to cheat the system and making proverbial criminal deals in back alleys, but Mm. that was not the case. I worked with um, a highly recommended college counselor named Rick Singer. I worked with him for a year. Pause. So otherwise she didn't go to the hood to go get the deal. Okay. Let's go. Here. um, And trusted him implicitly. And he recommended programs and tutors and... um, he was the expert, and after a year, he started to say, your daughter's not going to get into any of the colleges that she wants to. And um, I believed him. And so when he slowly started to present the criminal scheme, it seemed like, and I know this seems crazy at the time, that that was my only option to give my daughter a future. Oh, now you know how black people feel and brown people feel. Our only option are to commit crimes in order to sacrifice ourselves for our kids, okay? Now, I don't believe for one bit, because she claimed her daughter didn't know nothing about it. Y'all really believe that? So she allowed her daughter to believe that she just somehow passed the test that she knew she couldn't pass in the first place. Like, come on. Come on. Like, girl, girl, okay? And then she goes on to say during this interview, because it was, it was like a seven, eight-minute interview, and I'm just going to chop it down for you. But it, she had a black woman sitting beside her, and this woman, I guess, was her liaison. You know how when you, people get out of jail, you know, they go to the halfway house? So she had to go to a halfway house or do community service, and so she picked a, a, a community service center that a black woman uh, owned to help women in prison transition into their lives. And so um, she said she wanted to work and she wanted to get on the ground so much that she hosted jogging classes for fat black uh, and brown women in order to help them lose weight and taught them how to use a little bit of the computer. But now she sits on the board, just like she sat on the Homeowners Association uh, when she in Desperate Housewives, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so 
she is dedicating her life to giving back because she doesn't want to be seen as a career criminal because it's not her. She just felt like she was out of options. And so, you know, she wanted to exercise the options that she has, which, which was her privilege, in order to get her dumbass daughter that she raised her to be into a college that she did not belong into. And guess what the daughter at now? I think she, it, don't she got some type of subscription service? I don't know if it's OnlyFans. I don't know what it is, but she's on a subscription service. She's YouTube doing what we're doing. And now she's in a, a school that, you know, kind of like a community college now doing a drama program because she dumb. You know, it's just, it is what it is, you know. And her mama knew it. That's why she paid $15,000 to fake test scores and take opportunities from kids that actually could have got in. But she don't want to shift blame on her. She want to put it on the college recruiter. But he wouldn't have no job if it wasn't for desperate housewives like yourself. Moving on. 11-day prison sentence. That's the privilege. That's some privileged shit. Just, just a small act getting six months. Okay? She done robbed somebody. Speaking of, uh, okay, y'all, the, look, I like his facial expressions be everything. So before, after, y'all thug is eating. So they don't deny him Percocets, Oxycontins, all in there, because you know that stuff keep you skinny. I ain't never seen no fat crackhead yet. So now that he can't get it, he got to really focus and he, he focusing on food. It's kind of like when you stop smoking. Every time my mama would stop smoking, she would go eat up everything and wouldn't share. You know what I'm saying? And so that's sort of what he's doing. Now, he's he stressed out. Now, the big belly come from high cortisol levels. Everybody know, hit the wine glass if you know anything about a cortisol belly. I had one for quite some time. Yeah, okay? Still got it a little bit. Um, but, yeah, when your stress levels is high, which he's going through a lot of stress trying to fight a RICO case, all about lyrics that he wrote. See, that's why you got to be careful what you write and say because it's chanting and it will come into fruition. And so they're using those lyrics to prosecute him, trying to decipher every word for a case. Now, I think he may get off because it don't look pretty strong. But the way his lawyer is sounding out here, it sounded like Olga. If you know who Olga is, hit the wine glass. Olga, <laughs> when, when your thug's lawyer came and said his name start, uh, uh, stands for truly humbled under God. <laughs> thug stands for truly humble under God, and YSL stands for the purse brand. Not young slime life, okay? The purse brand. Now I'm like, if it really sound, if it really stands for the purse brand, uh, they probably would have hit you for copyright infringement by now, sir. But this is what he paid his lawyer to do. Okay, so this is gonna be an interesting case. I just hope him sacrificing them goat heads is gonna work, cause right now his head is looking all, all like a goat, especially with the little horns at, at the top. Show him again, Jasmine. We've been there before. Okay, we're going to watch and see. His ass is fat, boy. I know them other prisoners is enjoying that. Mm -hmm. They are, because what happened was, no, they enjoying him because I remember there was some videos that leaked to him in the studio, and they was watching. It looked like G-A-Y porn, and it was in Young Thug's studio. There ain't no secret. It ain't no secret. You know, these women don't care about these men being on both sides, playing for both teams, like Diddy. Don't play. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I know the thickness in there. They enjoying that because they want to feel that woman, that woman ass and them woman thighs, them thick thighs, you know? That's why Diddy always did squats when he was in the gym. He was trying to make sure he was on his saucy Santana, okay? Speaking of saucy Santana, pull him up. Let's go. Now, Saucy Santana has been under a lot of fire, a lot of knives, too, <laughs> a lot of knives, okay? Um, and so his latest video almost got him canceled. You know what, Jasmine? I forgot to tell you. I got some wine on your Miami. Damn. But it's so heavy, it needs to go in TashaKLive.com. It can't go out here. It's involving actual batteries. Actual, because you know I can't say the full word over here. I'm sorry. They got y'all like kindergartners over here. I'm so sorry. 
but it involves actual battery and there's some charges, brand new charges and we'll talk about it. I said, oh, I forgot about it. I, it came to my DM at three o'clock this morning. I went and searched, found it. The charges was right there. I said, oh, oh, somebody got to be the bad guy. <laughs> Sorry, young Miami. She going to know what it is. She probably gonna come out and come tell y'all first now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, listen, so <laughs> we're still fighting and we're innocent until we're proven guilty. <laughs> okay, back to the, the topics at hand. Saucy Santa, I wish I could tell y'all, but I really can't, okay? But I will in Tashkelive.com. Let me see if I can do a bonus live or something over there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to figure it out. I gotta talk to Jasmine because she's tired. We all tied. All right, so Salsa Santana um, had to come out and make a speech because he did a video. Did we have that video? Okay, th th this what this what Tussie Roll, because he's shaped like a Tussie Roll. He looked like a Tussie Roll. <laughs> Go ahead, play the video. All right, let's just get this up. Hey, Tussie Santa Boogie. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, how you doing? I don't know why they keep bringing girls out here. And you find out you trying something? I'm not trying nothing. He trying it. He trying it. He trying it, and he trying it. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Bring some real niggas from back there. And then y'all even got no bad hoes. She ain't had no BBL. Her makeup wasn't done. Like, what are we doing? So, like, the hoes need a BBL? Yeah, like, they ain't got no BBLs, no mink lashes, no lace wigs, no nothing. She just came out and said, fuck it. <laughs> Tussie roll. Here's his response, because he got ate up for that. They was, on, they was licking that to the road. Let's go. Let's go. I think when it comes down to being a bad bitch, Ooh. to me, I like super glam girls. Um, Barbies. I remember growing up as a kid. Oh. What time is it? How long we been live? Can I say it? Okay, go ahead. Um, and I would get shoot out the room like, hey, go play the game, go do something because I would want to sit and watch all of the women get ready and do their makeup and put on their blush and their heels and their best clothes. I remember being in high school, me and my friends and my cousins was kidding the dolls and I would make them dress up and we would walk to the um, the park by the projects. They'll have on six inch heels and I would be over living for them. I just always love Barbie doll girls, high heavy glam girls. And that's just my preference. That'll make nobody else less than or um, natural girls not that. It's just a preference. I think now with like me being a rapper and just society and Instagram, um, I wouldn't say BBL is the standard. I would say that we see it a lot. And for something, for me, that's something that I like. Almost a lot of the girls I'm around have BBLs. I went and got a BBL. Um, I just think it's raw. I'm infatuated with strippers. Anybody know me know I go in a strip club and make it blood because I love bad bitches. I love lashes, weave, body done, small waist, stripper heels, white toes. Like, I just love bad girls. I just love bad bitches. It don't take away from natural girls. I grew up with uh, my first girlfriend I'm in love with, Brianna, natural. No no fillers, no body done, done had kids and some other shit. I still love her. Like, I just think that it's a, it's just everybody have a preference of what they like. I feel like <clears throat> I just always praise girls. You could go into um, comments. You could go look at the people that I share. You could go to most women. When I meet women, I always compliment them and tell them that they pretty natural or not. Um, I feel like for me, it's just, you know, a preference. But it not, it's not to say that everybody else is not a baddie. Flo Millie natural, she a baddie. Lizzo natural, she a baddie. Lola Brooke natural, she a baddie. Coyle Ray natural, she a baddie. Like, it's so many girls. Um, um, Chloe Holly, they baddies, they natural. Like, you could be, you could be a baddie in your own skin, in your own state. I just have a preference. 
I love bad bitches with BBLs and long weave and makeup and glam, hot, heavy glam. I just like Barbie doll girls, but I think that all girls are beautiful. <clears throat> and it's really no shade, not for me at the end of the day. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. And I go to sleep at night okay with it. Y'all gonna be upset. I'm gonna have to agree with Tootsie Roll. The butterfly, uh uh, that's all. Let me see a Tootsie Roll. And if you see how a Tootsie Roll is shaped, that's exactly how he's shaped, like a Tootsie Roll. I don't think he got a BB. He got a BBL face. Because everybody got the BBLs. You notice they got them round faces like Ari and your Miami got the face now. Jada got the face. He got the face. It's a BBL face, which means the ass is coming to the face, you know? And so I agree with him because here's the thing. He has a brand. Everybody knows what that brand is. And if girls are auditioning to be in his music video or whatever project that he has going on, he has a certain standard. Just like for Hype William, only one at Blazing Women. We didn't know that these Blazing women were, were being picked to get their asses beat. We didn't know that. We didn't know. You know what I'm saying? You have to understand, everybody has their preference, and he has the right to have his preference, just like McDonald's served burgers one way, he serves burgers another way. He just happens to look like the burger that he's serving. You know? So I'm going to have to agree with this on this, and natural girls, like, you shouldn't get fired up at all because there's plenty of women, there's plenty of men out here, women that are casted for women that are natural. But if he want to, you know, cast for women that look like transgender women. Remember Maury Povich, man or woman? We can't, we can't tell. We can't tell. So, you know, and that's no shade to transgender women at all. I think trans, 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 some, trans, some transgender women are pretty, very pretty. You know, I'd be like, oh, wow, how'd you do that? I want my own makeup done. I saw one the other day at CVS. I was like, how did you do this? Like, please. But they have time for that. They have to convince. He has to convince. So if you don't want to get turned around, if you don't want to get your feelings hurt, why the hell is you over here? Look at him. Look how he done transitioned himself. I know Saucy look. I want to see Saucy before and after pictures. I got to see them. Okay? Natural girls, this is not our fight. <laughs> This is not our fight. Moving on. Mm. All right. Mm. That was a big gulp. Uh, it, it, it was like throwing back in the throat or something. Like, ugh. You, right. Now, I told y'all the whole steal. I told you the whole steal. I told you that that temporary restraining order that she put out was temporary, which means I could go right now and put a temporary restraining order on Jasmine. I ain't got to ask. I ain't got to prove nothing. Kiki done put them still photos out, even though they came from a video that was in the house. And when it was time to present at this court date the actual footage to prove that he was allegedly elusive to her. Elusive, I told you. We got to be uh, uh, PG-13 over here. She wasn't going to back it up. Same way she lied on Trey. Now, what she lied on Trey about ain't got nothing to do with other accusations that Trey Song has going on, okay? But what Kiki said just did not add up. The same way it was going on with Darius just did not add up. Kiki knows she the breadwinner in that family. She got a YouTube channel, Instagram. She got a network. She got all that money coming in. And guess what? He can get child support. So she got to prove. Because you know what? He's been a great father in the public. So now in order to tarnish... The man's reputation, you got to kind of make up allegations so that he won't go to court and take the baby from you because you work too much. And he can prove that. And he can prove that he's a great father. And you just don't want to be out here on Sherry Shepherd time. Now, if you understand what I mean by Sherry Shepherd time, she paying child support for kids she ain't never seen. Kiki know what's up. Now, I told y'all when it was time to prove them receipts, she, oh, all of a sudden, we're going to mediation to work out. To work out what? You said the man was elusive to you. Your mama said she was going to put a bullet in his head, all types of stuff. Y'all done did everything you can to tarnish this man's reputation over allegations that I told y'all to hold tight because something wasn't going to add up. And when it was time for you to get in front of that judge, you knew that all that was going to be documented, that he ain't do that. He ain't do it. And if he did it, you wouldn't be in mediation with somebody that 
allegedly hits on you, and then you're going to mediate for him to take his baby because you know you got to work. Kiki, like I said, Kiki was raised very sheltered in delusion, in La La Land, L.A., and she doesn't, she lacks interpersonal skills, relationship skills on how to be in relationships, on how to act when you break up. Conflict resolution, she doesn't have it. She appears to be smart, but she dumb as hell. Because anybody smart wouldn't be fooling around with somebody like this. That ain't got it. Allegedly. Y'all keep playing, y'all. Y'all keep rolling down Kiki Lane if you want to. It's dark down now. Them alleyways is dark. There's a lot of lies, and you don't know what's going to come out and get you. But I told you, when it was time to present the receipts on her having to play the video before the judge, all of a sudden we want to go to mediation and try to work it out so he could see his child because that's all he really wanted to do. You had him walking behind you the entire time holding the baby by the neck. He was doing right. You could tell that, you know, this is all he wanted to be was a father, and all you wanted to be was a mother and be with a woman, not a man. You're a stud, Kiki. That's why you go for men, beta men, that you can emasculate before the public because you have the resources to do it. This is an easy target for her. While she goes and uses the alleged use to justify her reasons for being a stud in a relationship with a woman. Y'all keep playing if you want to. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Mm. Moving on. This ain't none of our business. We Stevie wanted to the bullshit. All right, so we got another break coming up right now. And after this break, we got Jeezy and Jeannie Ma, Tiffany Haddish, Carrie Hilson versus Tierra Marie. And then we got a special, special, special interview, okay? That's going to lead us into our explosive interview with Shirley Strawberry's husband, Ernesto's mistress, okay? That happens to be Steve Harvey's co-host. It's a lot going on over there, okay? All that and more after the break. Stay right here. Like, share, and subscribe. We'll be right back. We got some sponsors that we need to brag about, which means boldly raise a glass, too. We'll be right back. Hold that thought. Let's go. Now, I know that we're all tired of feeling sluggish, constipated, and not our best selves. That's the reason why I choose to use Vanity Cleanse's 15-day detox, a botanical blend that will clean us all out. This is just what you need for a constipation relief and flushing out toxins and stomach bloating due to IBS which is irritable bowel syndrome. And it may even support a little weight loss. This 15-day detox contains no artificial ingredients and is a fantastic way to start your journey to restoring your gut health. So visit VanityCleanse.com because beauty starts from within with Vanity Cleanse. You are the mistress to Shirley Strawberry's husband, Ernesto. We would talk every day for like five minutes, like every, like, a, like a breakfast call. I was a friend. And... A f just a friend. We just talked about everything, you know what I'm saying? Five minutes a day, whatever, whatever. I was just a friend. Girl, if I found out. I'm sure. As a wife. But you know what? If I was. If you was if speaking I was, to my husband. If I today, was fat and busted, would, would they care? Now, there's been calls that have been all over the internet. Mm -hmm. Okay. That have not only exposed Shirley, the husband, you, and Steve Harvey. And Marjorie Harvey. There's been a lot of these calls circulating. Now, surprising, let me read this article, okay? Because I, I just want to read a portion of this art article. Now, Shirley Strawberry's estranged husband is incarcerated at the Atlanta Fulton County Jail on gun possession, theft, back up, fraud. Hold on. No, I just want to read the okay. article. That's, That's why you're here. Okay, That's go why you're here. <laughs> so, on um, gun possession, theft, fraud, child pornography charges, as per the Jasmine brand. Now, according to Sandra Rose, Williams is serving a 23-month prison sentence. Like. You have very intimate phone calls with this woman's husband, and you're claiming that y'all have never slept together, and you only had five-minute conversations of him waking up and saying good morning to you. That's Nesto calling. That's Nesto calling you. Uh -huh. Okay, go ahead and answer. An inmate at the Cobb County Adult Detention Facility. To accept this call, press zero. Ernesto, it's Tasha K. How you doing? That's what you're dealing with right now. And I put that shit on every fucking post that I ever had on Instagram. I understand it. I took all that shit, all everything I see, twist it to make fun. I don't fuck about that shit. They're going to see God come true today. If you speak 
I don't give a damn if, if, if uh, Steve don't like you. I don't, they ain't got nothing to do with me. You here to deliver a mother message, and I want to see you do your mother job. Steve Harvey made her get up and address the things that she spoke with her husband about in terms of his marriage and what's going on with him and Marjorie and her not being at the house and she's never been to his house and, you know, a lot of stuff. And that then, was one phone call that they, when he was just asking her how her day was. And she was just, when a person's in jail, mm -hmm. especially. Okay, make sure y'all are present. TashaKLive.com, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. And for those of y'all that are wondering what I'm drinking, I'm drinking the Apothic White, okay? Winemakers Blend. Um, I really love white wines because they don't get me too throated. Or maybe I just got a high tolerance for them because I drink too much, okay? This literally tastes like pear, apples, and a bottle. Now, this is this is a blend, so it's kind of it's got a blend of, like, Chardonnay, some Pinot, um, what is it, Pinot Grigio, a little bit of Sauvignon Blanc. So they just kind of take various grapes and mix them together. has a tad bit of sweetness, tartness to it. It's really good with any type of salad or just any time of the day. Okay, it's like a good Pinot Noir. All right, you can get this wine honestly for about nine dollars from your local grocery store. You know what I'm saying? It ain't much because I ain't got it, and I ain't trying to make y'all spend a, a fortune for it. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Moving on. Let's go ahead. Now, now we getting somewhere. So, and the divorce begins. Just like I told y'all about Tiana Taylor. Remember, I told y'all about Tiana. I'm just using this as an example. You know that Emma uh, Schubert was jealous and all of that stuff came out after she said that it wasn't due to jealousy or infidelity. Tiana lied, okay? Now, you know we've been on this for a long time. We know how Jeezy moves. Um, and so Jeannie Mai has decided to hit back. I know she was irritated over his Black Men Don't Cheat campaign. <laughs> I was trying to tell y'all, when men put a lot of effort into proving the social media and not the person that they're with, that they're good men, because they know in the background they're not good men, they're doing it for public perception. That's all. Pandering, you know? That's all he was doing. You know, marketing himself, pandering. And he never once thought that it was ever going to be an Asian woman to bring his ass down, okay? At all. He thought Nia Long was going to be able to bring him up, but Nia, uh, 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 Jeannie Mai... She coming, she coming, she coming. Now, he claims that she's gatekeeping the baby. It's her baby. You made her a baby mama. You know what that's like, Jeezy. You got a few out here. Can't say that I blame her, you know? Who are you going to drop the baby off with? I can't, I mean, you got to understand, you done pissed this woman off. You done did several interviews, done made posts on your brand, divorcing the woman. All I hear, black men don't cheat. You and Charlemagne, y'all don't cheat. Y'all lie and take. Okay? Okay? Now, um, <clears throat> Jenny might hit back and divorce Darks. Now, you were stupid enough to sign a prenup or her sign a prenup saying that if you cheated, she would get half. Of everything. And so here's what I think also happened is that he knew he could not keep up that end of the bargain. And so before things got too thick, he decided to walk away because he knew she was going to soon find out that she wasn't the only one. And so him out here on this campaign, it's just to prove to us and, and the courts and maybe her, you know, that he didn't cheat. But we, we know the cheating comes with a price. And you know how Asian people are. They move into your neighborhoods, into your house, and set up liquor stores and, you know, and, and beauty supply stores and, and grocery stores and just take all your money. So what GD Mai just did. What'd you expect? But you know what? Your best friend out here telling it, and I'm trying to get him on the show, okay? Now, best friend, go ahead. Jeezy, you're not a real nigga. You know why? Because your wife just came out and said you cheated on her. You cheated on her. She said she did not cheat on you. And I believe her because I know you, nigga. I know you. Yeah. And I could probably pick on who you cheated on with her with. Because a few bitches I know you still stay in contact with. Mm. I know because they told me I talked to them. Mm. This motherfucking Jeezy filing for divorce is nothing new. This nigga never been loyal to anything. J tight pocket Jenkins mm -hmm. never been loyal to a motherfucking thing. His first baby mama, he left her in the hood because he was goddamn tired of eating noodles. Uh -huh. I guess. Second baby mama, 
he left her because she, I guess he didn't want to eat foo foo no more. I guess that's an African food, foo foo. Mm -hmm. And the third baby mama, the wife, now he ain't left her. I guess he tired of eating bam bam shrimp and Korean barbecue. I don't know what the fuck going on. But I do know what's going on. That ain't never been loyal to shit. Now, this is Jeannie's, uh, uh, Jeezy's, uh, uh, I think, bodyguard and best friend of 15 years. They done obviously fell out. And he knows where the baby mamas are buried. <laughs> He knows what it's, I bitches are buried. And so do Tasha K. Because I'm going to get them out of you. I show sure am. I ain't no way. Um, but what's interesting is that, um, you know, like I said, I knew it was something. Because I was like, why is he setting up his own interviews on a YouTube channel and paying somebody to sit down to interview him to give him uh, uh, homework that she didn't even mention? And he said he was going to do the homework. Um and he used the black woman to do it because he wants to get back in black women graces, although he's been allegedly sleeping with black women the entire time he was married and uh, flaunting around Jeannie for her platform in order to rebrand his ass. You know, it's just... <sighs> Jeezy. <sighs> I don't know. But shout out to the Impressive Channel, okay, for catching that clip from the best friend. Okay, of 15 years to say that he's speaking to the baby mamas and to the side bitches that you've been sleeping with. And I'm sure he's probably gave the messages over to Jeannie that she's going to use to take you to the laundromat that she's going to open up now with your money. You know, they own those two. <laughs> Dog meat on the side. <laughs> up next, Tiffany Haddish. Now, you know what's bad? You know, she was just arrested uh, last week uh, on DUI. And she was arrested a year prior in Georgia on DUI. Now, what's so bad here? What's wrong? We got an issue? I saw your face. I'm like, hold up now. I can tell by the energy. Okay. Sorry. Jasmine gave me a look like I'm like, what's wrong? Okay. Now, you know what's bad about this is that when you're facing charges you're already on probation in one state, which is Georgia, for a DUI. Then you mess around and catch another DUI. And I've been told y'all she had a drinking problem. It's heavy. Okay? Ever since Common Love, she has not been the same. And I honestly think it has to do with her just wanting dick. But she wants a sta she wants status dick. It's different. She wants to be accepted. You know, Tiffany is the type to just throw drunk pussy at everybody. I shouldn't have said the, the P word, but, you know, it is what it is. It's out there now. Just like her pussy. Um, and she's just been throwing it around and nobody's catching. It's like we're not catching the jokes or anything like that. You know what? She's losing her shit. You know, she's tired. <laughs> I said, where she learn how to make their faces from? Gabrielle Union? Like, fuck you. She's like, damn, Tiffany, back up, you know? But what's bad about this is when one state got to step in to assist another state and tell them that your DUI and your drinking problem is so bad that they're going to, hold on, let me get the quote. Let me make sure I say it right, okay? They're making you enter a drug, hold on, a drug and alcohol, yeah, program, and they are restricting you from uh, using booze and drugs while you're on probation. Now, if she keep playing, they're going to put that brother Liza in her car, in the Tesla? Because I know that's why she thought she could drink a drive, because she got that, that, that assistant, you know, the self-driving. You know what I'm saying? So she figured, like, if I'm too drunk to drive, they can do it. You know what I'm saying? But then she forgot to enable the self-driving and was driving while she was drunk because she was impaired. You know, and that's why they got it in the first place. But I'm like, you know it's bad if one state got to call California and tell another state that this bitch has to be restricted. That's bad. Tiffany, it's time for you to join Russell Simmons over there in Thailand where he at to get clean, and then you come back and you dominate. Because being in comedy clubs every night to pay your bills and make your ends meet in Hollywood where ain't nobody got it, you around drugs and alcohol. I'm telling you, I done been down there to them comedy clubs. They all got their own blunt sitting at the table, and you ain't even got to smoke. You just catch a contact high. I, it happened to me. I got so high one night. I said, I know they had something else in there. I couldn't even drive home. I said, no, nah, I don't smoke before. The fact that I'm leaving a club where they smoking and I can't drive my own car home and I ain't had nothing to drink. Oh, they smoking some other shit. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So we're going to pray for her. We're going to keep her in our prayers, and um, hopefully she do what this cracker say. Moving on. Now, I don't know why they won't leave this little girl alone. I told Hazel, too, because Hazel, Hazel E. came out here dragging Tierra Marie, saying Tierra Marie was very, if you was on the app and you saw the Hazel E. full interview, because it's three hours long, uh, hit the wine glass if you saw Hazel E.'s interview. And a lot of y'all saw a human side of Hazel E., because a lot of y'all said, I did not like her. But watching that interview made me like her. She was so, she said, I'm so glad that I chose you over Jason P. I shouldn't have said that, but you know. I just had to throw a little shade. <laughs> just a little shade. Well, shout out to Jason P. You know, he tried. But she said, I'm so glad, you know, that I did the interview with you as opposed to somebody else because they would have been trying to make a mockery out of it, you know. And so I asked her about Tierra Marie, and I didn't expect to get the information that I got about Tierra Marie being drunk like Tiffany. Okay, they need to be drinking partners. You know what I'm saying? They may make good relationship partners too. This may, you know, if she wakes, you know, if she allegedly gets drunk to the point where she just wakes up eating random cat and covered with with the cat feces all over her face, you know, um, that's a problem. That's a problem. Now, she she said that, listen, she has denied that it's happened. I think maybe because she didn't remember. And that's what Tierra said. I said, Tierra, what she, I mean, I, I said, Hazel. Well, she drank it, and Hazel was like, yeah, I said, so she probably don't remember that, you know. But she was like, I always re- admired that how sexual, you know, Tierra Marie is. She's just confident in her sexuality. I'm like, yeah, alcohol will do that. Mm-hmm. Make you confident in anything. Sleeping with people, you you like, oh, my God, I, I did this? Right. And so to see Carrie Hilson coming for Tierra Marie out of nowhere, I said, not not Carrie. Not, not Carrie? Let me play this clip because I just don't understand what this has to do with anything. Like, roll the clip. Oh, yeah. Oh, the deep side. And took a sip of water, too. Mm -hmm. All right. When you're a performer. Yes. You know, we know how important it is to give love to other performers. Yes. Right? Especially when you happen to be sitting on the front row at their show. Mm. Mm. Okay. okay, I like yes. where it's going. Mind you, no one else no one else was performing. Was anybody else performing that night? Do you know what night I'm even referring to yet? Okay, it's fine. Okay. All right, fine. Okay. Okay. New for him too. All right. All right. Yes, he was there. Okay, so um, I remember just this I don't want to be here energy. Mm. I don't know why I'm here. She was with a gentleman. He was, she was his guest. I know the guy very well. She was with him. So she was his, you know, and she didn't want to be there. It was very obvious. And I felt disrespected by that. So when they came to my dressing room backstage, I said something and we almost got to scrapping. Shit. My Decatur came out. Her town came out. Uh, and, uh, it could have got real ugly. I don't appreciate you being on the front row yeah. of my show and yeah. not giving me no energy. Mm, I don't remember exactly how I said it, but it, it was worse than that. It was, I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, but it was that, it was that, it was like, we used to spell our artists. You already know what it's like. Yeah. You could give a courtesy Bob. It's a lot of Something. things you can do. Right. It's a lot of things eye. you can do to show, to show love, but she was this. Mmm. Damn. In the front row? Mmm. She was that. She yeah, was, that's nasty she was... business. So, maybe she didn't like it. And she didn't... I mean, we can't fake... We can't fake... Like... like the, the, the delusion with these artists. And that's why she ain't got no career now. Because she's always been very delusional. Wasn't this the one that beefed up with Beyonce? And where's her career? Tierra. This is Tierra's version. Let's go. I actually went to one of her concerts, was there in the front row, and um, <laughs> I was getting calls because my cousin was watching my dog. In the midst, I'm bobbing still, you know, enjoying the show, actually. 
So um, we go backstage and um, she's like, uh, she comes back. And um, she's like, well, I'm like, hey, how you doing? Nice show. Mm. Hi, how are you? Mm. And she looked at my hand like, and I was like, hi, I'm Tierra. And she looked at my hand. The story's so beautiful. It's and then so much more like, beautiful if we knew who it was. I know, it would be. Even though I have an idea. Okay, you probably do, because yeah. she, she's a little stanky. And, um, <laughs> yeah, so. Bygones be bygones. Let's, yeah. Let's question. But who, that, if that happened again, the, the Detroit will come out. The bitch. The, the Detroit yeah. will come out. Yeah, sorry, that wasn't that classy either. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to have to agree with Tierra on this. You can't force somebody to like your music. Now, she was polite enough to come backstage and tell you that you did a good job. This is where, the, this is where you know, I, I, I get irritated at. It's because people do things and they want participation awards. It's like they just want to be thanked just to be thanked. And you could have been giving a very mediocre performance. You don't know what she was going through. You don't know. You understand what I'm saying? And you can't expect just because people sit front row that they're supposed to be some type of super fan and she's an artist herself. Maybe she was critiquing you. But for you to bring this up like it was actually wine, it gave that you was whining about something. You And you have been since your career has been absolutely nowhere. You've been whining about your man that doesn't exist. Whining about Beyonce that doesn't exist. In reference to your career that doesn't exist. Now Tierra Marie, somebody that's unproblematic, that had no type of pull or say so in your career. You were a much bigger artist than her. So who cares if she likes it or not? Look where you are, look where she is. But instead, because you was too busy looking for yet, you know, just for people to tell you what you want to hear. They told you what you want to hear and that's why you ain't got no career now because you ain't had no real friends. You was competition. They got you out the picture. Now look, you doing interviews about a shoulda, coulda, woulda, wish I woulda had. Moving on. All right, here we go. Here we go. Now for the grand finale, okay? So we got two parts for y'all. Now we understand that not everybody's going to come to TashaKLive.com. And if, like I said, we catch you streaming anything from TashaKLive.com, you will be striked. And we're not taking it back. You better ask a few creators out here. They beg, scream, kicked. We don't release nothing, okay? Um, even on your private members only, we watch them. Your Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, wherever, okay? We got it. DCMAs everywhere. Um, we worked very hard on putting this together, but we had help, okay? And I'm no stranger at knowing because our platform is so massive now. I do not have a lot of time to put a lot of investigative journalism into the stories that a lot of the, you know, the, I would say the up and coming YouTubers have been doing, which is the groundwork. That used to be me, and I had a lot more time on my hand, but now I got so many shows slated. I don't have that time. And so when I see stories like this and I see the YouTubers that have been doing the groundwork, I am going to partner with those YouTubers in order to get y'all the correct information, even when I'm not privy to the information. Sort of like how I did Love and Marriage Huntsville when I had to call Funky Dineva up in order to do the story because I never watched the show. But for some reason, the mistresses love talking to Tasha K. Okay. We ain't got to add nothing, Tasha. We Okay. Now, um, this story is very messy. Now, of course, Shirley Strawberry's husband is locked up on various charges. She is the co-host, a very controversial co-host of Steve Harvey, who spent her, her career giving advice to women about relationships and didn't give any advice to herself about her relationship, okay? And Steve Harvey helped her to push that shit. And he gave advice to people about relationships, and meanwhile, his wife is a whole ex-drug dealer. It's a lot going on. It's a lot going on, okay? And so um, a lot of jail calls have been released. A lot of information came out. Shirley has been pillow talking, but ever since she got caught pillow talking about her boss, her boss gave her an ultimatum. Get rid of the husband or you get rid of the job. She got rid of the husband. So she has since announced that she's going to be diver divorcing Ernesto, but it wasn't until she got caught talking about things that we already knew that was going on in Steve Harvey's house. 
with his wife. We knew the dynamic. This, the team had been talking to us and everybody out here. We've been on their ass for a long time. That's why he's out here pleading, saying, y'all going to put some respect on my wife's name. I'm tired of her being attacked because your own team doesn't like her, including Shirley. Okay? And so um, in order to go into the interview that we got with Sonya Durham, the mistress, I do have to give credit to Grown Woman Vibes for helping me to put together this story, a.k.a. Nyla Says. All right, and so Nyla and I sat down together, and we unwind everything from the beginning. Well, she did, because it was a story that she worked hard on. We did give credit to the young lady, too. I believe her name is Lisa, if I'm not mistaken, that uploaded the jail calls and things like that, just so we can give a full picture to y'all for those of y'all that haven't been following every single thing because there are so many calls. But Grown Woman Vibes has been following every call, okay? And so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and introduce Grown Woman Vibes, a.k.a. Nyla Says, and then stay right here after we're done because then we're going to uh, end the show and head on over to TashaKLive.com for our exclusive interview with Sonya Durham, the alleged mistress, okay, to Shirley Strawberry's husband. We got our own letter going on, all right? Show Nyla some love. Let's go, baby. All right, Nyla, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, darling? I'm doing good. You look beautiful. I don't know why you don't want to show your face on your damn channel. I, I do. I go on camera sometimes. You better, uh, okay? Yeah. You better. I'm excited to have you on this uh, show. We're already recording. Are you ready? I'm ready, girl. Let's go. Okay. So I'm excited to have you on this show. You know, there's a thank lot been you. going on behind the scenes. You're welcome. No, thank you. Uh, you've been working very hard on these uh, Ernesto, uh, last name Williams, right? I keep forgetting his damn. Yes, uh, Ernesto Williams. Um, Ernesto Williams recordings. Now, I have to give this uh, this interview that we're about to drop. All the credit to you. Um, I wouldn't have been able to sit down with the alleged mistress. Sonia Durham is her name. And oh, that's, I don't oh, know if you know, that's her real name. Oh, I absolutely know, honey. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, because we had to take care of the flight and things like that. And, you know, mm -hmm. we flew her in and, you know, it's been a big story. So Steve Harvey, his co-host, Shirley Strawberry, has a husband named Ernesto Williams, who's currently locked up on various charges, fraud, scamming, uh, uh, po child pornography, bestiality, and some other things. But there's been recordings that have dropped that have been very, very uh, detailed, okay, about the nature of the relationship between uh, him and his wife, Shirley Strawberry, who is the producer of the Strawberry Letter on the Steve Harvey Morning Show, and who's worked with Steve Harvey for many years. And, of course, him be being just associated and being married to someone who is uh, uh, in... Uh, who's in business with someone as big as Steve Harvey, whose marriage and relationship and life is just one big controversy uh, in itself, uh, given what, you know, the rumors that have been swirling with, uh, you know, him and Marjorie Harvey and her past. And Shirley, uh, Shirley Strawberry ended up speaking about some of that uh, uh, that was going on in Steve Harvey's house that we knew we kind of knew, but we didn't have that actual proof. But being that, you know, her as somebody that has worked with this couple for many years, and she got on those jail calls with her husband, Ernesto, to talk about that. I mean, we're very, very damaging. It gave us a lot of eye-opening shit. I'm just kind of doing an introduction because I'm going to give the floor to you because you got the wine, child. <laughs> <laughs> you got the wine. And so, you know, as we're listening to these recordings, there's a mistress. And everybody's trying to figure out who this mistress is to Shirley Strawberry's husband, Ernesto, who's on call flirting with him. He has a very different tone with the mistress as opposed to with his wife, Shirley. And so I had to call you because I saw you on the mistress ass. Uh-huh. And I said, girl, what's her Instagram? I need her for an interview. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we do over here. We give all the, the extra extracurricular family members and side pieces and side bitches or whatever a space to talk. And so she quickly accepted. And mm -hmm. I didn't know that Ernesto had told her to do the interview. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very interesting. Okay. He did. He was like, I know you the gossip queen. Cause he actually called right on top during our interview. And she said, Oh, this Ernesto he's calling. I said, Oh, well, does he want to talk? She said, sure. And so that call is going to be released. And so, 
Um, oh. Yeah, it's all in the interview with this mistress, with Ernesto. He's talking about his charges. But what was more interesting is what the, the mistress said about the charges. Like, she unwind it all and to me she knew too much so if you don't mind kind of give us the background on how you you know chose to pick up on this story because that's how I heard about it okay so I'll be perfectly honest with you one of my subbies was like you know this stuff that's going on with Shirley Strawberry and I was like yeah I heard her husband was doing some stuff and she was like but girl you have to go and review the calls so I'm like I'm nosy right and mm -hmm. there's phone calls there so I'm gonna take my butt over there and review it and it was very interesting because, you know, they don't know that they're being recorded. Well, they know that they're being recorded, but they're stupid enough to think that no one's ever going to hear it. So I'm listening to the calls. And then you start to notice that there's another woman that he's dealing with. That's not Shirley Strawberry. And mm -hmm. so I was already prepared to make commentary based on Shirley's behavior and um, how he was able to intercept a woman like her. Because it's it's listening to him speak and her being such a poised, sophisticated um, woman that exhibits class, it was a bit of a, a misnomer to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? how did this happen? Well, all, men, so, like, um, all men love hoes. Oh, yeah, men love the hoes, okay? They love hoes. I don't know why they, they be trying to act like they don't, but it's okay. Amen. And it's better to hoe from home, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But listen. Um, so she, you know, they they right away, they get intimate to the conversation and start talking about her breast and stuff like that. And so I was like, okay, this might be pretty big. And the more they start to talk, the more they start to kind of get relaxed and you start to realize that this is a big deal. And so that made me and everyone interested in just who she was and, you know, how deep this relationship went with him, her, and Shirley, and the other characters that have evolved from this. What other character? I didn't even know nothing about that. Do tell. Oh, this okay. So we got, <laughs> baby, we got Lamont, who is a ex-con slash friend of Ernesto. We have Dre, who is someone that was incarcerated with him before, who seems to be a very supportive friend. We have, of course, Sonia, and we got names for all of these people too, by the way. Mm -hmm. You know, we got silly Sonia, side chick Sonia, all this kind of stuff. Nasty Nesto, that's what we call them. Okay. And um, who else is there? There's his son. And then there is, uh, I think there was one more, other, one other person that came on, but the recurring characters are Lamont, Dre, and Sonia, of course. Mm -hmm. So once we started doing this, I started reviewing his social media because I became very interested. Again, the charges are crazy. They and are. his connection, his connection to Shirley Strawberry, it just it just does not fit. You know, she just again appears very poised, very classy. Um, and just the fact that she's in the advice business. And I'm like, how you did not see this man coming. So it made me want to kind of like inspect who he was and see what I can pick up on. And what I picked up on is that this was a slick Negro, mm. that this was a guy who had mastered the art of charm. And when I say that, I mean, for her age group, he's definitely mastered it. He comes off as the Southern gentleman. If you go through their social media, it's, you know, he refers to her as his cotton candy and he's always opening the doors and my baby my sugar. And he appears to be very doting, very attentive, very classically um, gentlemanly. You know, that Southern gentleman, the, mm -hmm. the actual Southern gentleman, he plays that part very well. And so again, it was confusing because she accepted the role, right? But looking at how serious those charges were, and then the differences between her and Sonia, because I know men like hoes, right? Mm -hmm. But he My has this, I got a whole husband at 18 years. He love hoes, child. They love hoes. <laughs> well, I ain't gonna lie. My husband hate hoes. He be cussing hoes out. He be like, go somewhere with your hoes. <laughs> they say that. They try to do that in front of us. And then when soon as we walk away, they be like, hey, ho. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I just love my honest about it. He be like, it's pretty ho. <laughs> you, you know? Pretty ho. <laughs> yes, <laughs> hoes, be pretty hoes be pretty. 
Okay, mm-hmm. Sonya's, yeah. Sonya's a pretty. Yeah, you know she's pretty. Um, to me, but um, she's very pretty. She looks like yeah, Bambi. she's in a, she, she looks is like a well, She's a well-preserved, attractive woman. Okay, and I, I was say, shocked at her age. Girl, don't she look good? Fifty-five. She looks, she looks amazing for her age. Yeah. She does. But when she's I still saw her in person. I said, okay, she's real cute and. You know, big Bambi eyes. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. But, but she, she still ain't shit. She had a, a coffee cup and she kept picking it up. And she was, I don't know if this had anything to do with her gunshot wounds. You know, because she said she got fired mm-hmm. gunshot wounds, but she could not. But she was she was making me shake. Well, you know, hoes be nervous too now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hoes be nervous, okay? So don't never take away from that. Hoes be nervous, right? And, and then I tried to call you host. during the interview, honey. Girl, we were so mad. That phone. I, I was, was so like, mad that I missed that call. I was, I was so trying to mad. turn it up. I was trying to turn it up, y'all. And then we had somebody, we had another uh, interview. We waited, so I was like, shit. Damn, I got to end it. But I got to <laughs> here now. That's all that matters. But go ahead, go ahead. Cool. Go ahead. Okay, so I start, you know, getting into his business or whatever, and I noticed that he has a couple of IG accounts, one of which where it's just him and Shirley, you know, and he refers himself as triple OG, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, who refers to themselves as triple OG? Because there's a negative context to that. It doesn't have to be, but mm-hmm. it doesn't go with classy, refined, like his other IG account, right? So his other IG account is the elite, Nesto elite lifestyle or something to that effect. And it's basically, you know what it puts you in the mind of? Oh. Um, a Kevin Samuels type of, uh, Kevin Samuels type of uh, energy mm. um, or, um, you know, Kevin had a classy way about him, about presenting mm-hmm. things and he was Very real. distinguished. Right. That's that's how it comes off. Okay. And um, de- every part is 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 you can tell that it's very meticulous, very strategic the way that he's doing it. So he knows what he's doing. And so I'm like, OK, this dude charged with financial crimes, which makes sense because he's trying to come off as someone that is rich, because, you know, that you have to present as successful if you want to get people to believe that you can make them successful. So I'm like, OK. I get it. But then I started going through comments because that's where you get all the tea. Mm -hmm. So I'm scrolling and I find comments from women that are saying, you don't love me no more. Um, You're ignoring me. And you can tell by this time that somebody's blocked it or something like that because they can't see it. And so I noticed that the person was also following Shirley and all of his other accounts. And I'm able, I was able to find comments from, t- it was two different, two different um, people. And they were similar comments though. So I just screen recorded it and I would go live and we would kind of like dig. And then when I would get off, I would dig a little bit further. Okay. And I'm digging, baby. Look, I'm like, okay. So it starts coming out that these folks getting evicted. Um, who, get, who getting evicted? Shirley and her husband? Girl, Shirley Not Strawberry. Steve Harvey's co-host. She's supposed to evict it. Baby. Uh, beat more than five times. More than five times in the eight years that they were married. Evictions. Yes, ma'am. Evictions. Um, then I started really picking up my quote-unquote investigation. And I started to go into his background. Because he couldn't just wake up and be a criminal, right? To this magnitude with those kind of charges. So I find out this man has been in and out of jail and prison since the 70s. Uh huh. Financial you're gonna crimes. It's going to be interested to see what the, because the, the mistress laid it all out, right? Okay. You're going to be interested to see like what she said, because I want to do a, a after the interview with you, because mm-hmm. what I was trying to, to do was involve you in the interview because you worked so hard on this. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, kind of do an after to kind of come in and, and fill in the gaps. Because when I tell you homegirl eyes was everywhere in the room, but on me and I was, you know, I'm a I, I'm looking at you. I'm like, so right. right. You know, I don't you guys are in the same room. You're in the same time. room, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. She flew in. Like I had her right. I mean, we weren't that far apart. And I was, 
I was zoned in. You know, I had my wine and I'm like, you know, and mm -hmm. I kind of gave her my summary at the end. I want to hold that because I know you're going to be, and it's nothing you told me, it's based off of everything that she said. And so it's interesting at what you're saying here, it's going to match what's in the interview. Interesting. Now, oh, yeah. You do it's know she put out, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, but you do know she put out a little video to summarize your interview this no, morning. She can't, she can't summarize what that what went down in that room. Well, let's just, uh, and I'm sure she can't. Um, what I picked up on her from the calls is a lot, but but anyway, let, let, let's get into it yeah, because yeah, yeah. I know we're going to get ahead, there or whatever. So this man, again, has been locked up in and out of, in and out of jail and or prison since the 70s. We're talking about burglary, theft, um, of course, bad checks and stuff like that. Um, I believe I saw some um, violence, not necessarily domestic, but like just some battery charges and stuff like that. Career criminal. There's mm -hmm. never been a gap in criminality, which again brought me to pause because you already take a risk um, as a woman getting with somebody, right? And mm -hmm. my thing is if a woman wants to take a risk and marry someone that has a background, number one, you need to analyze what that background is. And in my opinion, there should be at least a full decade of distance between him and that lifestyle, as well as a full decade of him executing a lifestyle that supports him outside of criminality. He didn't have that. He didn't even have that in their marriage because he got locked up three times during their marriage. Amen. Mm -hmm. He got Look locked up. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Look to your neighbor and say, Go ahead, Nyla. Baby, say he it. Got, yes, he got locked up three times during the marriage. Mm -hmm. And and do you Baby. think Shirley didn't know? Because it was interesting oh. because Ernesto called into the show. So they're going to hear Ernesto speak to me. Baby. And Ernesto said, I can't tell you what he said. I can't. I wanted to be a surprise. I was Man. just like, go ahead. Go ahead, Nala. Spill it. Spill okay. It. <laughs> okay. So, yes, she knows. Okay. Yes, she knows. Um, And because it was acknowledged on the phone calls. And it got to the point where she was telling him, well, you know, you need to, you know, have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about your troubles and leave that lifestyle behind. Shirley was telling him, it's time for you to get your record expunged. It's time for you to stop going to jail. So she's been, she knows what she's dealing with. And so that made me think, and I can't prove this, but just intuitively, I believe she knew about some of this stuff. I just, I, I refuse to believe that this woman so poised and somewhat worldly, right? Even though you can, you can fake being intelligent to a small degree, but one thing that you can't fake is sophistication. You can't fake a certain um, experience, if you know what I mean. You can get, a, get around it for a minute, but this woman has had years of being this way. So it's hard for me to believe that she's not savvy at all. And plus, she's almost 70 years old. You don't get the naive card at 70. Damn, this ain't her first rodeo. Shirley was that old. Shirley is another woman that is well preserved. Looks amazing. Shirley is 69. He showed them how to pick them. They aging gracefully because I was shocked that the mistress being 55. Baby, she looks good. Okay. And she knows it too, by the way. I know you can, I'm sure that came off in she her does. first moment. She does. She, she, she out there. She was, she was, uh, uh, what, what, what brand did she have on? I've, huh? Carl Lagerford. I mean, she, she had her. <laughs> okay, baby. Okay. I hope it didn't come from the Chinese people. Uh, kinda, but listen. I gave that just a little bit, but you know, it's not who wears the clothes, how you wear. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's how you wear. Absolutely. But go ahead. So this situation, um, again, Shirley and him are talking on the phone. She's telling him he, he needs to get together. When they're talking, he sounds more like he's speaking to his mom. She's giving him scriptures. There's no, you know, if you've been dealing with a man for a while, even when you're comfortable, like even seeing your interactions with your husband, you can tell there's some intimacy there. You can tell there's some, some, something there. You know what I mean? Some chemistry, mm -hmm. no chemistry. Um, talking to Sonia, it's chemistry. When he talks to Shirley, it's like um, all business, uh, this weird laughing and grinning and um, nonsensical questioning. 
But when he's talking to Sonya, it's you can tell he's talking to his woman. You understand what I'm saying? But so again, Shirley's 69 years old. She's been married before. Okay. Right. She was what well, she was married to. Uh, I, I think it was Michael Strawberry who she was married to. That would be Sheridan's father. Okay. Um, and uh, they were married for a while, got divorced. But what I've also noticed is that she goes through great lengths to conceal her daughter's identity. I mean, her daughter's uh, father's identity, which I thought was weird, right? And the reason why I'm saying why I'm saying is that she goes through great lenses of it is because if you look online, even if you do a cursory search, right, a couple of pages on Google and you search for her father, it gives the identity of another man that passed away. So it doesn't quite make sense. I don't, maybe she don't want to involve, you know, the other, the rest of the strawberry family. I don't know. But when you take steps to be deceitful, even a little bit, you have the capacity to lie or be uh, privy for lack of better words. So I don't necessarily buy the naive wife 100%. And that's just me personally. Now, I don't think that she knows the extent of what he does, but I think she knows she got a crook. You know what I'm saying? Also, there was some statements that he made that brought me to pause to her, saying that he was willing to be thrown under the bus and be sacrificed and that he'll take he'll take all the heat. That kind of language. Ernesto said this is Shirley Strawberry in the recordings. Yes. He said that on the phone. Mm -hmm. He said that on the phone. And then, you know, they they would have the conversation. As you can see, this is how you get wrapped up in it, because they're having conversations where he's very disrespectful towards our daughter. And she's very dismissive. And you know that there's some very serious allegations surrounding some stuff with her daughter, you know, her grandchild. You know, so it's a lot of stuff going on. And what, based on what, the phone, what were the allegations? Do tell um, there's some you know, the child molest- said something different. Mm-hmm. The well, see, said something different. Go ahead. Based on the phone calls and some of the charges that we've seen, it seems like Sheridan is accusing him of some sort of molestation or as so- it's something sexual. That's what it. That's what it appears to be. So I'm not altogether sure, but that's what it appears to be. And whatever's going on, Shirley has taken his side from the beginning. And it's kind of like, I don't know why she's doing that. I don't know why she's acting this way. And to the point where she started keeping the um, grandchild away from Shirley. So here's another thing that happened. Shirley pays her daughter's rent. And that's not necessarily, I guess, abnormal for people who may be wealthy. I don't know exactly how much she was making um, prior to this. It was rumored that she was making like four or 500000 per year. I'm not sure if that's the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, but her daughter's almost 30 years old. She's been evicted over eight times. Like, fucking how many well, times? Well, she, she lives beyond her means because she's a lot like Nesto. OK, if you listen to the calls, she starts to talk about how like even when they're down to their last nothing, she's worried about appearances. I can't do this. I can't drive this because I don't want to appear regular. You know what? When I was listening to even her calls with Ernesto in reference to how Steve and Marjorie was living, she sounded a bit jealous, not Absolutely. inspired. Saying, oh, that Marjorie had a salon and a massage room. And, you know, those are the type of oh, things no, no, no. that, mm-hmm. you know, one can aspire to have. And, you know, I kind of can, you know, it's it's motivational. And I can see why Marjorie would keep a bitch like Shirley at her house. Let me tell you why Marjorie keeping that bitch away from her house. Because Shirley won't Steve. I don't care what nobody say. That envy, this, it's not just... Uh, and I don't even think she wants Steve because she's attracted to him. She thinks she's fine. She wants what comes along with having a man that is high profile and that can provide the type of lifestyle that Marjorie has. And in my opinion, again, this is just old lady mm-hmm. wisdom because, you know, I'm an old bitch. Mm-hmm, so it's like. Um, Shirley, uh, Marjorie need to stay, keep her away from Steve. Because Shirley looks at her being that close in proximity with him 
as a L because she has ne- she because she ain't got a chance to you know what I'm saying put herself involved with him at all. Mm. So you know what I mean. So she she's definitely right in keeping this woman away from her household because if she thought for five minutes that Steve would go, Shirley would go. I don't care what nobody say. She's I just don't understand too- why you're so excited to walk around and see somebody's house. Like, because she was like, you know, if Marjorie was in the house, we would have never done that. But I mean, she right. did feel the dynamic because I mean, that's her boss. She works very close to him. And, you know, she knows what Marjorie will and won't allow, you know. And right. so she said it. We don't come right. around. We don't get to get that close to Steve. But But why do you want to? You see what I'm saying? I understand that's your boss or whatever, but just just as a woman, as a married woman, right? Um, there's only I don't want to be in your house. I, you know what I'm saying? If you invite me over for tea or coffee, I'm gonna enjoy the coffee or tea, but I'm not interested in walking around a married woman's house, even if you know the relationship is with her husband on a professional level. That's an uncomfortable thing. You see what I'm saying? For me, it is. Because it just, it feels intrusive. Because I don't, honestly, I, I wouldn't be around any woman if I, you know, unless I had to around any woman's husband. Not because I don't trust myself or trust or trust the man, but I don't want those optics. And I just, I don't like bullshit. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And Shirley wants that life. You can tell. You can see it in her. It's Steve that she wants to give her that lifestyle, in my opinion. Right? Shots fired. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, yeah. I'm just saying it's, it's, I, I've, I have seen women like Shirley my whole life. I know what I'm looking at. I know what I'm looking at. So, and further, you know, they're having their back and forths. He's always, you know, pressing her for money, of course, cause he's locked up. That's normal, I guess, or whatever. She's always telling him, you know, I'm trying to do this. I don't have nothing. I don't have a place to stay. He prioritizes himself over everything that she says. If she starts to have somewhat of not even a breakdown, because she's never broken down on the phone since mm-hmm. we've heard it, but just a, a venting session. He turns it to him. Um, it's just, he don't, he, if uh, she says something like, I mean, she old, her back hurt, you know, her foot hurt. He starts laughing. You know what I'm saying? There was a time where he was, she was reaching what I know for, reassurance for him from him in the conversation and he's like um she she's talking about how men like younger women and he and instead of him saying well what do you mean i like you're older than me i like you know i like older women or you know he didn't do anything to comfort and reassure her he just kind of let her put the narrative out there and didn't really do anything to, you know what I mean? You mm-hmm. can tell she was reaching for some sort of assurance. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And he didn't give it to her. He didn't, he's very insensitive to, insensitive to her. She was on there asking, talking about she needs shoes. Um, She can't buy her a pair of shoes. She can't. Um, and this is all Shirley talking to her husband. Baby, this is Shirley talking to her husband, telling her she can't buy no shoes. Meanwhile, she spent at that point almost $25,000 on his legal fees with no place to stay. Amen. But let's move forward. So she she ain't got no shoes. She ain't got no place to stay. She's, you know, paying for all this stuff. And whenever she says she's going somewhere, this is his deception again. And this is how he gets her. She says, well, I'm going to this event and I need to do this and I need to do that. And he says, well, make sure the door is locked. Um, uh, Is there going to be security there? He starts to try to make her feel unsafe. Because remember, he had a security business, which I look, if you order security cameras from uh, Nesto, honey, I would be afraid if I were you. But he owned the layout of the house, especially with him being a career criminal. That's what I'm saying. And I'm talking about breaking burglary is on his record, honey. Burglary is on his record. He has a layout of people's homes. He installs security cameras, all of that kind of stuff. So it gets really deep. You know what I'm saying? So baby, look, Shirley, you know, you know, is talking to him. He's rushing her off according to the phone calls, because the lady who 
downloads the calls. Okay. She uh, gives a little brief summary. She doesn't really do commentary, just kind of gives mm-hmm. you a summary, right? He speaks three times, maybe two and a half times as much to Sonia during his incarceration that he did his wife. So he speaks to the, the to the alleged mistress. If she don't stop that lie. Listen, I I asked the questions that needed to be asked and I drilled hard. And when I tell you, I think they even zoomed in on some of her facial expressions and kind of how she was nervous and she was fidgety the entire time. And, you know, and I'm, I'm, you know me, I'm a, I don't, I don't have a dog in this fight, so I'm I'm looking. I'm I'm watching your answers. I'm remembering everything that you're saying. And she was just everywhere. She was picking up shit, going down, phone ringing, looking in the bag, shaking. Like her hand was shaking. I was like, "Well, is that because she only got a short intestines, or is that because you know she she nervous?" I was trying to figure it out. Is a medical condition because you know she's 55. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't know. You know, skinny people, they have a vitamin, uh, um, you know, people that little, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's, Cause I think she said she was like four ten, mm-hmm. and I think she's no more than like a hundred pounds. They, Very little. 93 pounds. Yeah. She, I think they have vitamin deficiencies. So they end up like, you know, having bone issues and stuff, you know? So I was just like, well, maybe it's a medical issue. Um, but but go ahead, go ahead, Chris. And it's a, it's a whole issue, baby. Hoes be nervous. Um, and you mentioned you drilled her. Okay, I bet oh you didn't God. drill her like Nesto did, though. Okay, because according to those calls, baby, the whore was being drilled with toys. Okay, and she told us on the phone, all of us, right? The whore said that. Nesto did things to her and made her feel ways that she have never felt before. And she found herself thinking about him all the time and how she, um, you know, had never felt that way before. And, you know, and, you know, he called her his, you know, she had his little hot pocket. Okay. Okay. Um, Nyla. mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to have to stop you right here because here's the thing. I want you to watch the interview. With everybody oh, no. else. No. <laughs> Nyla, and all of those notes and all that research that you did, we're going to come in for a part two. All of this is on YouTube. And I want you to bring it home for us because you have to listen to this interview. You really do. Oh, my God. I can't even take credit for this. This is all your work. Are you kidding gonna, me? I'm I'm telling you, you're gonna be choked up. Even Jasmine sat back and like, wait, what? Because Jasmine was the, you know, she the she the show producer. She watching and she listening to everything. So like, I'm like, some shit ain't adding up. This is how long was I on? Well, how long was I in the interview with her? Hour and a half. Hour and a half. Hour and a half. And when I tell you, there's never a dull moment. I mean, the whole interview keeps you on edge. But like you saying that right there, and her saying that I am not a mistress. Matter of fact, we're going to run the trailer. I'm going to let you see the trailer because all of this is 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 about to unwind and I got to give you credit. I want people over on your channel. Please Thank shout you. out the channel real quick <laughs> so they can go get that story. <laughs> My channel is Grown Woman Vibes, okay? You can yes. find me at Nyla Vibes on YouTube. All right. So, and on Instagram, shout out to Instagram too. Nyla says on Instagram and on Twitter as well as Facebook. And you've been doing this for a long time. I have. I've been on here. I started in late 2018. I have lost every channel <laughs> that I've started. Um, yeah, my my very first video went viral um, for a, a new YouTuber. My first video got like 100,000 views within... 24 hours. Who, who was that video? Oh, who did you? Did you I did a video on? and I am, and, and it's, it's crazy how it, it turned out, but I did a video about the McClure family. Remember oh. when the tweets came out about yeah. the husband saying racist stuff? And so that video blew up and this started my troubles though, because when that video blew up, um, the next day, someone came into my comment section. You know, I didn't know nothing about YouTube. I was a bored housewife nothing to do. So I said, you know, I'm going to do YouTube or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, someone was like, Nyla, do some research. I just saw that the kid's father is not Justin McClure. 
So I go and do the research and saw that the father had did something on a blog and he wasn't. So I did a video again. And then all of the divestment community attacked me um, because, and I've only compliment, Ami McClure is a beautiful, beautiful woman. And the mm -hmm. children are beautiful. And I just spoke to the fact that her husband was a drunk, an old white drunk um, who didn't have shit and didn't come from shit. And because she's such a beautiful woman and she got these beautiful little mixed babies, she was making an empire, therefore giving him a legacy that he couldn't create on his own. Oh, wow. And because of that, black women who have divested, um, and it, like that's that's another story or whatever, but I'll say the black women that worship white men, they were offended that I, you know, said something about that white man, baby. Um and so they were attacking me saying, oh, you're probably somewhere in the ghetto going to work, you know, for your king or whatever. Like, bitch, I'm re I'm a retired housewife and my black husband is at home. Mm -hmm. OK, so, you know, it's just we like. So, on that one, one time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so right. that, like, that turned that that turned into a mess and to the point where they said that um, and I didn't dox them or anything like that. I just put out the information. It was on a blog that and it was true. What was crazy is Ami McClure did a live stream and addressed me. It was my first video. She didn't say my name, but she said everything that I said in the video. And mine was the one with the most views on YouTube. So everyone knew that, you know, she was talking to me or whatever. So, but they took it as me attacking her. And I'm like, I'm just doing what I see other people on YouTube do reporting what's trending. And or so, yeah, that, nah, we just, we don't. We don't make the news. We just report it. Just report it. And, you know, yeah. that I end up getting like 10,000 subs in like a week. And um, then they just they they targeted my channel. And eventually, because I began to understand the women a little bit better, some of them, they admitted that they targeted my channel, my very first channel. And um, it's what it is. Well, listen, we're going to help out where we can over here. So you're going to get two videos on this platform and all your shit finna be trending online, baby, because you, you, oh, you shit, did man. this. Now, there, I, I, I want to give credit. Who was the woman that uploaded the recordings? I do want to get- Phone calls from prison. She is a very nice lady. Okay. Phone calls from prison is the name of the channel, and I believe her name is Lisa. Okay. Shout out to Lisa. Shout out to Phone Calls from Prison, but shout out to you and your awesome investigative journalism work, because I'm telling you, Thank when you. you see this- I need your notes to come back because we're gonna do a follow up of this on mm -hmm. you. All of this is gonna be on YouTube. Okay, and honey, honey. Like when I okay. tell you, you go. It's like you go. I know you gonna bring it home because I was at the end of the interview when I told her. I know Jasmine thought some shit was gonna go left up in that motherfucker because I was like, baby, let me tell you something. <laughs> what from what you just said here? I don't even need to listen, even though you had briefed me. You know on a mm -hmm. call, you know, a, a, a couple nights prior, but mm -hmm. I was just like, just from what you told me, this is what I see. And I'm shocked that everything that you just put together and everything that she said, I'm in more, I'm more inclined to think that, you know, uh, Roswell police department and Shirley strawberry, they got a bigger problem on their hand. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's something, it's something brewing with, uh, with them. It is. It's gonna come. Oh, you out. know they finna, You know they think they're gonna make a movie, right? Because we all want to see a movie about him and her. Mm -mm. It ain't gonna be that version? kind of movie. It ain't gonna be that kind of movie. I'm telling you, wait till you see this. So I want everybody to head over to TashaKLive.com. Definitely want them to follow you at Grown Woman Vibes to get the backstory. So when they do meet the mistress Sonya Durham, okay, in this interview. They will know how to fill in the gaps and kind of get a full picture of the story. And thank you so much for your hard work. And I can't wait to see what your commentary is going to be after you, you watch this interview. Thank you. All right. <laughs> With that being said, now we got to go for now because you will be back. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Thank you, Nyla. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. You are the mistress to Shirley Strawberry's husband, Ernesto. We would talk every day for like five minutes, like every, like a like a breakfast call. I was a friend, and a, just a friend. We just talked about everything, you know what I'm saying? Five minutes a day, whatever, whatever. I was just a friend. Girl, if I found out. I'm sure. As a wife. But you know what? If I was- If you if was I speaking was, to my husband If I was day, fat and busted, would, would they care? 
Now, there's been calls that have been all over the internet, Mm -hmm. okay, that have not only exposed Shirley, the husband, you, and Steve Harvey, and Marjorie Harvey. There's been a lot of these calls circulating. Now, surprising, let me read this article, okay, because I I just want to read a portion of this article. Now, Shirley Strawberry's estranged husband is incarcerated at the Atlanta Fulton County Jail on gun possession, theft, Back up. Fraud. Hold on. No, I just want to read the okay. article. That's, That's why you're fraud. here. Okay, That's go why ahead. you're here. <laughs> so, um, gun possession, theft, fraud, child pornography charges, as per the Jasmine brand. Now, according to Sandra Rose, Williams is serving a 23-month prison sentence. Life. You have very intimate phone calls with this woman's husband, and you're claiming that y'all have never slept together, and you only had five-minute conversations of him waking up and saying good morning to you. That's Nesto calling you. That's Nesto calling you. Uh-huh. Okay, go ahead and answer. And then wait at the Cobb County Adult Detention Facility. To accept this call, press zero. All right, Nesto, it's Tasha K. How you doing? That's what you're dealing with right now. And I put that shit on every fucking post that I ever had on Instagram. I understand it. I took all that shit, all everything I see, twist it to make fun. I don't fuck about that shit. They're going to see God come true today. And you speak. I don't give a damn if, if, if uh, Steve don't like you. I don't, they ain't got nothing to do with me. You're here to deliver a motherfucking message. And I want to see you do your motherfucking job. Steve Harvey made her get up and address the things that she spoke with her husband about in terms of his marriage and what's going on with him and Marjorie and her not being at the house and she's never been to his house and, you know, a lot of stuff. And that then, was one phone call that they, when he was just asking her how her day was. And she was just, when a person's in jail, especially... Mm-hmm. from prison shout out to miss waller sorry you durham for coming through and trusting the wine knows to give us this information we wouldn't have it if it wasn't for her and definitely shout out to ernesto for even allowing me to talk to him as much as i could okay and so listen i'm not gonna make y'all wait we actually made it available let's go ahead and make it available right now how about that jasmine so we're going to make the interview available right now on TashaKLive.com. I do hope that you guys all enjoy it. Remember, we will be scouting to make sure there are no private screenings of our hard-earned content. Okay, we have a whole team of people that we pay that work really hard to get this together. And I'll be damned if y'all just take our intellectual property and give it away for free. Okay, and so, um, yeah, it's only $12. That's not much. Okay. And, uh, yeah, thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, subscribe, okay? Again, guys, the interview is now available on TashaKLive.com. If you have tips on your favorite celebrities, please feel free to email me at unwindwithtashak at gmail.com or hit me on the Instagram on unwindwithtashak. Follow me everywhere. Follow me every single where I answer all the DMs. And with that being said, y'all, I am exhausted. Now I gotta go. Bye!